Chapter 7 A good name is better than precious ointment, and the day of death than the day of one's birth. It is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting, for that is the end of all men, and the living will lay it to his heart. Sorrow is better than laughter, for by the sadness of the countenance the heart is made better. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of mirth. It is better to hear the rebuke of the wise than for a man to hear the song of fools. For as the crackling of thorns under a pot, so is the laughter of the fool. This also is vanity. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad, and a gift destroyeth the heart. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof, and the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry, for anger resteth in the bosom of fools. Say not thou, What is the cause that the former days were better than these? For thou dost inquire wisely concerning this. Wisdom is good with an inheritance, and by it there is profit to them that see the sun. For wisdom is a defense, and money is a defense. But the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. Consider the work of God, for who can make that straight which he hath made crooked? In the day of prosperity be joyful, but in the day of adversity consider. God also hath set the one over against the other, to the end that man should find nothing after him. All things have I seen in the days of my vanity. There is a just man that perisheth in his righteousness, and there is a wicked man that prolongeth his life in his wickedness. Be not righteous overmuch. Neither make thyself overwise, why shouldst thou destroy thyself? Be not overmuch wicked, neither be thou foolish, why shouldst thou die before thy time? It is good that thou shouldst take hold of this, yea, also from this withdraw not thine hand, for he that feareth God shall come forth of them all. Wisdom strengtheneth the wise more than ten mighty men which are in the city. For there is not a just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. Also take no heed unto all the words that are spoken, lest thou hear thy servant curse thee. For oftentimes also thine own heart knoweth that thou thyself likewise hast cursed others. All this have I proved by wisdom. I said, I will be wise, but it was far from me. That which is far off and exceeding deep, who can find it out? I applied mine heart to know, and to search, and to seek out wisdom and the reason of things, and to know the wickedness of folly, even of foolishness and madness. And I find more bitter than death the woman, whose heart is snares and nets, and her hands as bands. Whoso pleaseth God shall escape from her, but the sinner shall be taken by her. Behold, this I have found, saith the preacher, counting one by one, to find out the account which yet my soul seeketh, but I find not. One man among a thousand have I found, but a woman among all those have I not. Lo, this only have I found, that God hath made man upright, but they have sought out many inventions. Here in chapter 7, the preacher is dealing with uh, some of the issues that pertain to deal with the subject of death. How do you deal with death? How do you look at death? How does death affect you? What do you need to prepare? What can you take with you uh, from the standpoint of human observation of what life is worth and how you deal with death and how you think about death and what you uh, all of those sorts of things? This is what you're. This is what this chapter is dealing with, and it starts off in verse one. It says, "And the day of death is better than the day of one's birth." And and I don't think he doesn't. You got to remember the point of view that he's. T doing here is he is saying things that are negative so that you think about this this is a teaching style to make a claim to death is better than the day of one's birth and most people are going to think uh, um, gee, that's not really true you know I, I mean I might remember the day of my birth but it uh, seems to me that I had more potential and more promise when I was born than I did the day I died so I would think maybe the birth would be more that's what you're supposed to think. Okay, and then he's going to present other things for you to consider. He said it is better to go in verse 2 to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting, because the house of mourning is the end of all men, and the living will lay it to their heart, which means laying to the heart means keep it in mind, keep it understanding, 
Uh, prepare for it. That's what he's looking at. Sorrow is better than laughter. Uh, that's not for real. But basically to understand that there will come time when you will have sorrow. And as it says in verse 4, the heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of mirth. Basically meaning that those people who are foolish will always be looking for a fun time. The heart of the wise will understand that there is going to come some death and some mourning into his life, and he needs to be prepared to understand what he, how he views death and how he views how he is going to be affected by death. It is for, and then verse 6, for the crackling of thorns under a pot, for as the crackling of thorns under a pot, so was the laughter of a fool. This also was vanity. Thorns were very, very, um, the thorns grew on branches of trees that were like acacia trees, which they would burn underneath the pot to get the water to boil. And because they were not solid wood in terms of small logs or anything, because they were small twigs, they would crack and burn and be gone in an instant. So the laughter of a fool will just last very, very briefly, and then it's consumed and it's gone. And that's one of the things he wants you to understand. Fools, for all the laughter, for all the money and time and everything that's invested in the laughter, it is very, very, very short-lived. And verse 12, for wisdom is a defense... Now we're talking about wisdom is, uh, verse 11, wisdom is good with an inheritance, and by it there is profit to them that see the sun. So if you get an inheritance and are wise, that is wonderful because you will make the inheritance last. For there is a profit to them that see the sun. For those who are subject to uh, the laws of the land, subject to the, not, not as much interested in the spiritual things, but those that see the wisdom of looking after the money, okay, then wisdom is a really good thing. For wisdom is a defense, verse 12, and money is a defense, verse 12. But the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to those that have it. If you're better off to have, if you only have one, go for wisdom, because with wisdom you can get money. With money you cannot get wisdom. You can hire some people to tell you, but if you can't tell whether they're telling you the truth or not, it isn't going to do you much good. Verse 14, in the day of prosperity be joyful, but in the day of adversity consider, God has set one over against the other. In the day of prosperity be joyful also means to set something aside for another day, for a tough day. See, God has set poverty and challenge against adversity, uh, sorry, riches against the time of adversity, so that uh, by to the end that man should find nothing after him. In other words, there, if he saves enough money in the good times, He'll have some to see him through the bad. He might not have anything left over, but he will have enough. All things that I have seen in my days are vanity. There is a just man that perisheth in his righteousness, and there is a wicked man that prolongeth his life in his wickedness. Sometimes these things seem unfair, but again, we don't understand all the time, and especially the preacher here doesn't say he understands that there is an eternal life and the wicked man may have a longer life here, but he isn't going to have the rewards uh, that the righteous man would have for eternity. Eternity is a whole lot longer than this life. Verse 16, be not righteous over much. That basically means don't be self-righteous. Don't be sanctimonious. Neither make thyself over wise. Same thing. Why should thou destroy thyself? Basically, that's what you do. Be not over much wicked, neither be thou foolish. Why shouldst thou die be before the time? In other words, do the best you can, okay? Don't make yourself excessively um, righteous for the, for the appearance of it, and don't be stupid. If you do that, you're going to die early. Don't want to have that happen to you. And the rest of these parts also take into account... Um, Lo, I have, lo, this have I found, that God hath made man upright, but they have sought out many invention, inventions, means many excuses around doing the things that are right. God made you to be righteous and to live with that.